so I will say if you've made it this far and I haven't lost you so far um, things are going to get a bit easier probably a whole lot easier now um, because like the hard part is basically complete um, you'll see why in just a moment um, but the last video um, we finished talking about uh, this derived class um, this derived object how it was being set up that way whenever we come back out here um, we can understand a bit better on how it's getting used and how the members are getting used and how the virtual uh, function calls um, are, are getting used um, and I again I left you this derived one class for you to set up on your own um, so I will say if you if, if something that I uh, said doesn't make sense or is incorrect feel free to reach out to me and correct me on it um, or if uh, you need clarification for for something uh, feel free to reach out to me um, you can uh, let's see probably the best way to do that um, on my github course file if you just open an issue here uh, that's probably the best way to reach out to me um, you can you can add a comment on YouTube if I if I done something stupid if I made a stupid mistake or if there's a better way to do things please let me know all right, um, so if we dive into this function, we can see that it looks like a lot of this has been set up for us. The reason why is this function is doing a lot of the same thing that our previous function done. Um, we can see that our derived constructor is being called here. In this case, we are having our derived count directly being called. So this is not a virtual function call. Our derived switch is actually directly being called as well. The reason why this is different is because this is being set up. Uh, the object is being set up on the stack. Um, let's see if I can show you that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so right here. If we go back to uh, this one, we are allocating new memory space in order to set this object up. This one is being set up on the stack. So what's happening is, instead of these being virtual function calls, it's just calling it directly. Um, the nested object still is a virtual function call. Um, the reason for that is it is a pointer. Uh, so if we, so this is going to be random. Um, this will be a derived, we'll pull this up. So this is still a pointer. Uh, so in order for this to this hello function and the test function in order for that to get called uh, it has to do it in a means of you know the, the virtual the virtual way um, whereas how this is being set up you know with with it being set up on the stack it, it can directly call um, call those methods uh, so yeah, there's really nothing that that we have to do um, to make this look any better. Uh, purely for the fact that we done all of the work previously. So we'll just rename this to um, stack object. Uh, 
And then we'll move along to this one. So I think the, the trend here, you can kind of see um, this is, you know, pointer. Uh, actually, we'll pointer object just so things make a maybe make a bit more sense. Um, we can we can go ahead and rename this global object. Okay. So this one is using um, a global pointer. Uh, or a yeah a global pointer uh, as its um, pointer for the uh, for the object. Um, so how is it doing that? So as we can see, um, we don't have a constructor here. So that means that it has to be constructed somewhere else. Well, we know that it's not getting constructed in any of this in one of the earlier videos. Um, we talked about this entry. The entry um, function calls this libc main. You'll see a couple of things here. Um, and let's Google this one more time. So in this uh, this description, um, we again we have main, uh, we have some things here, blah 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 blah. We have this void init and void finish. So if we read down here on what these things mean, we see that. Um, obviously calling main uh, with appropriate arguments and we have right here calling the initializer function so this actually happens before main happens so that's going to be right here so this is going to call this um, routine that's going to go through this init array initialization array right here and all of these functions are going to happen uh, before main so we have that one that we just looked at and also this one right here uh, so, if we go back to this init1, we can see that there's our global variable that we were seeing right here. Uh, again, the easiest way to figure that out is just to browse to it and we see immediately that it has a cross cross reference for uh, init underscore one. We can immediately know that this data uh, is being manipulated um, inside of uh, you know this initialization array. So essentially, what's happening here? Here's our derived um, constructor so this is going to be our derived object this is being set up on the stack and then uh, we're gonna call this G underscore derived my naming conventions for none of this um, was consistent but you get the idea uh, this is a global derived object so if we edit this function, derived pointer, derived pointer, we can rename it to copy T 
to that. If we go back here and choose this, we can then apply the derived structure over this, just like how in the earlier video we applied the uh, array over that array section. And you can see that we now in global memory space, we have all of our offsets. Um, so if we go to global object here, we can see that instead of having um, just the 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 global you know uh, address we actually have meaningful data that's been filled in for us here um, so uh, that pretty much wraps things up um, we're pretty much finished hopefully uh, I didn't confuse you too much hopefully uh, by watching this video series and um, following along then you have gained a better understanding of uh, Ghidra if you didn't have any reverse engineering experience prior to this then hopefully you have gained a bit of knowledge and you can go and use that in your future endeavors if there was something that I done that was incorrect, or if you know of a better way to do some of this methodology, then please reach out to me and let me know.